We're excited to announce that Jim Campbell Radio has now been unveiled on YouTube. You search Jim Campbell Radio. When you get there, please subscribe. You'll get all our updates. Content is regularly updated. And Forensic Talk with Jim Campbell and Business Talk with Jim Campbell, all of our podcasts are right there for you. All of this new consolidated data, content updated regularly. Jim Campbell Radio. The electric vehicle market hits the 10 million mark. And a leader in the truck EV market is one of the old line car makers. The iconic Ford 150 truck goes all electric as the F-150 Lightning hits the road. The chief engineer behind the Ford EV truck joins us. And then we'll talk with investment money manager who's done perhaps the best in-depth analysis of Tesla and the EV market. That's all on Business Talk with Jim Campbell. Linda Zhang is the chief engineer behind the Ford F-150 Lightning. She's been with Ford for nearly 25 years, having worked in manufacturing, product development, finance, and corporate strategy. She was featured on the cover of Time Magazine, representing the team electrifying the world's most popular truck. She went to the University of Michigan and the University of Michigan Roth School of Business for her MBA. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. No, oh, thank you. It, it's good not, not to have some news exclusively uh, Tesla-related, and I might add you beat the Cybertruck uh, to market. Let me ask you first. People say that the startup car, uh, electric companies can write off of a blank tableau and have an advantage over the legacy uh, company. What's your thoughts on that? And then tell us briefly your story with the uh, Ford Lightning development. The Ford Lightning is based off of our Asteri brand, so really, really strong product to begin with. It's one of the iconic products at Ford Motor Company, and that's part of our strategy is really electrifying those iconic vehicles. And for F-150, that's built on 45 years of best-selling trucks. So in a way, we're taking this truck that we know that America loves, and um, we're giving our customers the same um, features that they would expect with a truck, with the reliability, durability that they would expect with built for tough, um, with the to- towing up to 10,000 pounds and payload of over 2,000 pounds. But on top of that, we add the electrification and not just putting a battery in the product and having it go. It's more about what could we do with this electrification to really bring out the best in the truck. So, for example, with the near instant torque of the electric motors, it is 775 foot pounds of torque. And that's instant. So the second you step on the accelerator, this truck goes and it's smooth, it's effortless, it's absolutely the best ride ever. Um, and then on top of that, we said, well, what could you do with this wonderful space that used to, you know, have an engine in it? Because we don't have an engine, we have a battery underneath the entire vehicle. So with that, we designed this mega power front, which is a huge, basically, dry lockable storage, wide enough for two full-size golf bags um, that can be used for tailgating, commercial vehicle, uh, commercial uh, sites, or even, uh, you know, dry lockable storage. And then also harnessing, again, that electricity within that battery, basically leveraging this vehicle as a power plant or backup power generator literally on wheels um, whether it's away from home or even at home during a power outage so a lot of really great features within the truck um, and really taking this truck to that new level for our customers that might have been considering ev and once they get in it they're just going to absolutely love it let me ask you is this truck going to the plant the um the ice or the internal combustion uh, combustion truck or you see them as parallel, or how do you see the, the market going for the for your development and production? Yeah, absolutely. It'll be alongside our ice trucks. We know that some of our customers still are going to want to be in a gas vehicle, and that's okay, right? This is for those people that are um, interested in that electrification. And I think over time, um, again, it's it's meant as an and solution. It's giving them that truck functionality and all of these great features that's brought about by electrification. Um, And then especially with the um, improved range of 320 miles that we're able to do on on this electric truck, it's got great range for our customers um, to be able to use that literally every morning when they, uh, you know, 
leave for the day. Wow, that's a great race, particularly for a truck over 300 miles. Um, you guys are taking a different route, too. You're, you're, you're dividing the company into Ford Blue, which is ice, and Ford E, which is, which is electric. How do you see that affecting uh, the culture of the organization? Uh, what's behind that move? Well, part of the strategy behind that move is really to leverage a smaller kind of fit organization for E to be able to go fast and execute the electric vehicles um, very quickly with focused attention on it. Um, within the company, uh, we still work as a team, whether it's blue or whether it's E, uh, but the, the Model E structure really does help us be able to go a little faster. How about, now you've been here in Ford for 25 years and you've got a big position. Uh, Ford is obviously committed to having female leadership. <laughs> yes, I've been with the company for actually almost 26 years. It's hard to imagine. I'm dating wow. myself a bit, uh, but it's been a great 26 years, and I'm so um, proud to be part of the company. It's been a great company, and in, in a way, I love it because it's um, a, a, a bit of a family company that really fosters uh, work-life balance and taking care of its employees. So I, I really love it. And, you know, throughout my career, the company's always done right for me in terms of work-life balance. You know, I have two kids, and for me, at some point, you know, it's important to be able to balance that, and the company did that for me. So I think, you know, that bit of it is important, and I think that's, you know, dedication from the company's perspective to make sure that um, uh, we, uh, you know, value people that do have that balance as well. Um, so well, for me, it's, it's I'm very proud to be in this position, but I, I have a great team um, right beside me that's uh, getting all of this done and uh, a lot of really great future leaders uh, on that team. Great story. Now, you're, so you're sitting in the plant there. Um, how is the production? What kind of volume are you, are you are trying to get out? Are you having the supply chain issues? Um, so, yeah, no, we're not having supply chain issues um, We've been, uh, there's a lot of really great team members working on supply chains, working on chips, working on uh, vertical integration for even, you know, raw materials. So from that perspective, that hasn't hampered us really at all. Production's going really well. Um, we're starting full production uh, this week. And then um, with that, um, by the middle of 23, our goal is to get up to 150,000 units um, um, at running rate at that point. So really excited. And a lot of that in, uh, that increase in production is really just based on the overwhelming response from uh, our customer uh, base that uh, have reservations and have expressed interest in the truck. Does the, does the electric side is it, is it have much more profit margin or less manufacturing complexity? How would you answer that? So from a manufacturing perspective, it is a very different product. And in a way, it's a little bit easier for us to put together. It's really what we found. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, that bit of it is, is it has been a, a nice uh, element. Um, in terms of margin, we are margin positive on this vehicle, as we should be. This is not a compliance vehicle in any way. So um, it, it's important for us to make sure that that is the case. And, um, it is, so. All right, let me ask you one more question. What's Ford going to look like in 10 years? Oh, I am so excited about the future of Ford. I think, you know, over the next 10 years, um, there's going to be quite a bit of investment um, in, in electrification, and that's, that's going to be super exciting. Um, and uh, there's also going to be quite a bit of investment in um, the, the digital space and trying to get the vehicles to e even be more connected. So uh, super exciting to pl place to be right now, and uh, I just absolutely love being part of this company. Well, I have to say, obviously, uh, you've done a tremendous job on engineering and getting this thing to market at 150,000 trucks in your first year in what is an iconic truck, quite an accomplishment. Thanks for your time, Linda. Good luck. All right, that was Linda Zan talking about bringing a revolutionary product inside an evolutionary legacy company. Now we're going to move to a revolutionary company that produced a revolutionary project, the leading uh, EV maker in the world. That's obviously Tesla. And, of course, Elon Musk is an, always an ongoing story. He just bought Twitter. He's got the boring company that does tunnels. He has the neural link that does that's trying to create an AI interface to the brain, if you can believe that. He's got SpaceX, and he's got Tesla, 
and we have perhaps one of the best independent, in-depth reviews of Tesla and the EV market uh, in the form of a investment money manager, Vitaly Katzenelson, joining us, on, and we'll get deeply into Tesla and the EV market. From Philly to Fresno, Brooklyn to Boston, Data Cable Superstars has the best prices on installation of Cat5 and Cat6 wiring for cameras, computers, phone, and data, specializing in off-peak installs as to not interrupt your workflow. If this is an I-need-it-done-yesterday situation, then it's time to call Data Cable Superstars at 203-942-1427 or go to datacablesuperstars.com. That's datacablesuperstars, all one word, dot com. Data Cable Superstars, where estimates and Big ideas are always free. 